welcome back everybody to another CB Basson on this absolutely beautiful fall day. We're out here on the scenic Chifonka River and we're just kind of messing around out here but I figured while I was out here we're going to do a boat walkthrough video. I've had a few people ask me to do a little video on how I have my boat rigged and and why I have it rigged that way and I'm very peculiar on my boat and very peculiar on where things are at and why they're there. So I'm gonna get a little into that in this video here. So without further ado, let's get into it. There she is, folks. She's a 2018 Phoenix 721 Pro XP. And we're gonna start up here at the front. This is a Minn Kota 4 Trex, 112 pound thrust, 36 volt. Yes, I said 4 Trex, not all Trex. I did not want the all Trex for a few reasons. Main reason, a lot more junk to go wrong. Number two, it's added noise. I know that the foot makes noise, but you also now have a motor up here going rant, rant, rant every time you freaking turn it. And when you're up in the pocket like this here in the spawn, every little bit of noise spooks them fish. I mean, it, heck, I, if I'm in here, I'll turn my depth finders off when I'm looking for spawners or even looking for fish up shallow. I'll even turn my aerators off at time. When I know I'm, I know where there's a bed and I'm coming up to it, I'll turn the aerator off. That's how spooky these fish get. So they have their place. Don't get me wrong, Ultrex is a good trawl motor, but I didn't want it. Another reason I didn't want it, I don't need spot lock. Everybody's like, oh, you get spot lock, you get spot lock. Spot lock doesn't solve all the problems. When you're in a bayou like this, again, and you see a fish, and you get spot locked, that trauma is gonna turn around and poof, cause a big old commotion, stir up the bottom, and then the back of the boat's gonna start jackknifing around to stop the boat. When, if you have power poles, all you do is put them down and the boat stops dead a lot quieter, a lot less commotion. So spot lock will not solve all the problems in the world. It's great for fishing trestles or fishing offshore. It's great for that, but I didn't see where I'd use it enough to justify having all the other parts to go wrong and the extra cost. I stayed with the old fashioned four tracks. It works. It's a great trawler motor. Here we come back to the depth finder. This is a Lowrance HDS9 carbon unit. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth on it. I have videos on my channel here on how to use depth finders and these depth finders. So we're not going to get into them. Back here we have the power pole buttons, my up and my down. Now, the reason I have them split like this is so that if I'm looking at a fish on the bed over here, I don't have to take my eyes off of him to hit this button and know which one I'm hitting. I know the one on the left is down, the one on the right is up. So if I'm going along looking at this fish, I can just doop doop and it's going down and never have to leave, take my eyes off that fish. That's why I have them separated. Now another thing, key fobs. I am not a key fob kind of person. I know people use key fobs for trawl motors and power poles. That's not me. Uh, if you have a tower boat, you're gonna need a key fob for your trawl motor. If you have a, if you're a guide and you gotta be anywhere in the boat and operate the boat or operate the trawl motor, you need a key fob. For me, no, I don't want it. That's just stuff hanging on my neck that's getting tangled up in my reel when I'm trying to catch a fish. Or I've got to, again, looking at a fish and then I've got to look down and see which way the trawl motor's going or take my hand off the reel to hit the power pole buttons. No, that's not me. I want, I want the buttons on the deck so I can hit them with my foot. The less I got to do with my hands, the less times I got to take them off my reel, the better. Now we get back to the deck here. Padded front deck up here, very comfortable. And then the, de the storage layout, I love this storage layout. I love two compartments. I don't like the one big coffin lid. You gotta lift up half your deck to open up the freaking lid to get a crankbait out. That's just, that's not nice. I mean, I mean, come on, people. Every time I want to get one lure, I got to open up a six foot lid and reach way back up in there and get to it. Why? 
I got my two compartments so I can organize everything and separate everything nice and so I can get to it very quick and very conveniently. This is a rod locker, which I use for ca camera gear. It has all the camera bags in it. And I'll, I'll put raincoats up there, extra clothes, stuff like that. This one here is my plastics. Got plastic crawls and beaver style baits, crawls and flukes, swim baits, worms, and this is extra lures up here. New lures that I haven't opened yet, like new packs of hooks, frogs, crankbaits, all that. Uh, weights, everything. Everything new and extra that I need is up there. This compartment, here's a cool thing about Phoenix. They put the, the rod buckle latch on the rod locker door so that when you open the rod locker, your rods don't go falling out. Very nice. Now, here in the rod locker, it's just regular old rod locker, used to have the uh, tubes up here, but they were ruining the guides of my rod, so I took it out. And it used to have the organizer right here, but I took it out because it was pretty. When you had the rods laid out, it was pretty. But if you wanted that rod on the bottom, you had to pull all the rods out to get to it. And that's a pain in the neck. This way, they are all laying there. I can grab a rod off the bottom, toss these around and grab another rod, conveniently saving me a lot of time. Now, the main storage lid. This is a very, still a very large compartment, but having two compartments. I have my hook or hang up, like hang up lures that I'm gonna use that day. Had the chip clips here to hang up new packs of lures and stuff like that. There's so much you can do with this compartment and it's so nicely laid out that it's very convenient to get to everything. You know, on my terminal tackle, chatter baits, spinner baits, jigs, you know, whatever I want, bam, I, there it is right there. Very quick and easy. All right, over here we got the passenger rod locker. I don't use this for rod locker, uh, mainly because it's so small. You know, people that come with me, it's just too much of a hassle putting the rods in there and getting them out. It's very small, compact in here, but I do use it for my bumpers and extra rods. I store that all in here. The people that come with me usually just put the butts of the rods here, lay them out across here and strap them down. I mean, Megan's came with me and had this thing, just a big ball of rods. I don't know. I don't even know how many she had. There's plenty of rods can fit here. Right here is what I call my day box. This is where I put little plastic packs of worms and stuff like that, so I don't have to keep opening that lid. So if I'm up there fishing, I need a new worm, come back here, bam. I'm just put the ones I want for that day right here. This is just fingernail clippers, lighters, stuff like that, little tools. And underneath, you got more room for storage or trash. I use this for bulk trash. Put my, whatever, big packs of lures that I've opened up, extra line, stuff like that in there. Or, I mean, old line. So just basically more trash is what I use it for. La uh, ice chest. This ice chest is smaller than it was on my Champion, but it does hold ice better. Uh, you can put about 16 pounds in there and it comes up to this lip. Uh, and you start putting, say, four or five waters in there and it starts getting full. So what I do in the summer is I bring extra waters in that compartment. And as I take a water out of here, I get one out of there and put it in here. So it keep me having nice ice cold water. A little, a little tray right here for your sandwiches and... Uh, smelly jellies or whatever you want up in there. Regular little tool rack, normal stuff. Center console for your sunglasses and stuff like that, wallet. The net, everybody knows about this. Who's watched the Phoenix video, everybody knows it. The net's on here. 
<laughs> it is very convenient to get to. Me and Megan, if, if one of us has a fish on, we can have that out and ready before the fish gets to the boat. It's very easy to get to. Now, at the console, you can get two types of consoles here. You can get the one where the gauge is up right here. These two gauges are up, and you can flush mount a 12 in the middle, or ram mount a 12. Or you can get this, what's called a dual mount console, where it brings the gauges down and creates this flat spot. And there's aluminum under this flat spot. So you can mount two graphs here. I got two, a 10 and a 12, very solidly mounted. I've even seen two 16s mounted up here. And all your wires come out the console back here. Very clean, very clean, neat and organized console. I can reach the, I can reach the, uh, the depth finders conveniently while I'm driving down the river. I can see over them good. Very ergonomic layout. You have the buttons here, all the switches for the live wells and lights and all that. Now back here. Now back here. This here is a 50 gallon tank under here. 50 gallons of fuel. With that motor I can go around 200, around 200 miles. On 50 gallons that's really good this compartment behind the driver's seat is just for life jackets I use it for life jackets uh, throw cushions toilet paper my call equipment my call rings and call scale and all that stays in here or I get put it, it gets put in here two live wells now the big selling point of this boat to me two completely separate live wells not only as far as the water but pumps you have three pumps in each pump in recirc and pump out two of them can keep your fish alive the pump in and the recirc so let's say you have a catastrophic failure on this side where both pumps go out you still have a whole nother system with two more pumps over here nice redundant system keeping fish alive and putting money in your pocket when you win a tournament. This is some cushions that are coming off, but this is how it comes with this cushion. It insulates the lids, keeping your live wells cooler. Again, keeping the fish alive and putting money in your pocket. Oh, 46 gallons too of live well capacity. You could put all kinds of big fish in there. This compartment, I just have my little depth finder uh, covers on it in there right now. But this is what I use, my partners use. Every time someone comes with me, they can put all the tackle in here instead of it being laid out on a deck in the way. So that's why I leave this one empty. Now, now the back bilge. This is a mess, folks. I'm sorry got two little trays back here you can put tools and ropes and I even have electrical connections over there if I have to do anything with wiring while I'm out on the water and the three trolling motor batteries the onboard charger that in that bag is an extra bilge that I can put the bilge down in there alligator clip it to the battery and run a hose out to pump the water out if I need to two power pole pumps hold on the two power pole pumps cranking battery and oil tank for the motor and the main power on off switch this is really a mess back here not much to look at oh paddle you never know when you might need a paddle Right, guys we're gonna finish this walk through here on land so I can show you a little bit a few more things what I'm talking about some of the things that would be in the water if we were on the water there's a 250 Pro XS Optimax Mercury yes it's a two-stroke not the four-stroke I did not want the four-stroke because two reasons this one is proven I've had an Optimax before this one it 
lasted me 10 years and gave me one little minor issue. I had a, uh, a 50 horse Mercury before that and it lasted me 11 years with one minor issue. I'm going back with what works for me. And if I get half as good a use out of this one as I did the others, great. I'll be a happy person. And another reason is the four stroke is hideous. This is the best looking motor Mercury's ever made. I know that's personal, but I think it's the best looking motor Mercury's ever made. The four strokes are absolutely hideous. The, especially on a bass boat. When you're on an offshore rig, great. It looks fine because it kind of blends in with the big old boat. But this, on the back of a bass boat, a four stroke is hideous. So I wanted the two stroke. I always wanted one of these, the three liter Mercury Optimaxis. So I got one. It's the last year they made them. Comes with the, on the 250, you get the Torque Master 2 lower unit, which has the low water pickup on the nose cone, so you can really jack the motor high and still get water. I got the 26 pitch Fury. It came with a 25, but it just wasn't enough. The motor was over revving, the boat was chime walking. It was unruly. So put the 26 on there. Uh, this lower unit has the bigger shaft on it for semi-service and props and all. So it's rigged and ready for speed, basically. And shallow water running. Got the 10-inch setback TH Marine Atlas jack plate, hydraulic. It runs six inches up and down. Uh, right now it's sitting at corner of the gauge up there. It goes zero to 20, and right now it's at 15, which is the best for performance, speed, getting on plane. I can lower the motor down and get better rough water handling or uh, better turning. I can raise it to here and get better hole shot, better speed, and I can even raise it all the way to 20 while running on plane and not even blow out and get through some very shallow water. Now, uh, the speed, where it sits right here, I'm running mid 70s in the summer, uh, high 70s in the winter, even bumping 80 sometimes in the winter. And no, you don't have to go that fast. It's fun when you do, but you don't have to. But the good part about it is that at 60, the motor's not even sweating. I mean, I can cruise at 50 and it's not even breathing hard. So it's like riding in a Cadillac. But when you wanna go fast, it's a wild ride. And the two eight foot power pole blades, I did not go with the 10s because they'd be way too tall and be bouncing around back there. So I stuck with the eights. And this. Here lately, been noticing a lot of people getting these rods that go over the trims here and support the motor and they call that a transom saver. No, this is a transom saver. It goes from the low unit to the trailer and it supports the motor as you're going down the road and it's bouncing around on the trailer. That supports the motor. Them up here do not. That's not a transom saver. It might be a trim saver. That's not a transom saver. Custom. Here we got the custom aluminum trailer. This is custom ordered. Tandem axle, custom rims. I did not want the steel trailer. When I buy stuff, I usually keep it for a long time. So I would end up having to replace a trailer in five years. So with my champion, I went with the galvanized trailer. On this one, I bought the aluminum and galvanized trailer. It has galvanized support beams on it. Well guys, I hope y'all enjoyed that boat walkthrough. Hope you're still here. I know I'm probably pissing people off and y'all probably left. But those of y'all who stayed, thank y'all. Appreciate y'all watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see y'all next time.